Music Talk heads to Nashville, where David Newbold is ready for the times to get better. And they will, once you hear his new album, Power Up. I think you have a song coming out called Peeler Park in a video and all that. It's like today, right? Today. Yes, indeed. Yes. Yes, sir. So, so to get things started, why don't you tell us a little bit about the song and the video? Yeah. Peeler Park's where I go when I can't keep my own head straight. I drive that long, lonely road. I've got a million things to do, but they can't wait. Well, on the last record I did called Sin and Redemption that came out in 2019, I drove around at night uh, for a, a lot of times late at night listening to it over and over trying to settle on a running order because I tend to obsess about things like that. And, uh, right. and I, I would drive down the road to Peeler Park, which is at the end of my road. It's this long road in Madison and there's a park at the end that's abandoned. At, I mean, it's empty at night. It's kind of the opening to a nature trail. And uh, and uh, I would drive back and forth listening to the record. And one time I was there about three in the morning and there was a guy sitting in his car alone and i and i started just thinking i wonder what i wonder what his story is and it just kind of set me off on a voyeuristic uh journey you know the next time i sat down with my notebook and my guitar and pen and and uh so i just ended up writing this song about driving around at night with your thoughts and trying to put them all into perspective of the world and how you can you know sort everything out and go back home and look at your family with a, you know, with some pride. And it's right. You know, a lot of times things like that are a challenge and I just sort of made a rock and roll song out of it. Turn the guitars up. <laughs> yeah. There yeah. is some, some guitar in there, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. So I assume that's you playing the guitar throughout the record. That's me playing the guitars. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So you made the record with a guy named Scott Sachs and you recorded it in his basement. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Now, back in the day, it would be a weird story, but these days, fairly common. Everybody's scrambling to uh, come up with uh, new and exciting ways to, to get the job done. What, what's the story with you guys? Well, he's an interesting character for sure. He's he's a uh, he, he makes videos. He's a videographer and he's a uh -huh. musician and a and a producer, and uh, he doesn't do all that much producing. But we were I was over there. Our kids are around the same age, and we were having a play date around the beginning of COVID times. And, right. uh, and, uh, we kind of wrote this song power up really quickly and we, we just had fun kind of recording it and then, uh, jamming it. And then he, he sort of edited it together and, uh, sent it back to me and, and it came out so cool that I, I just thought, uh, well, I should really make my record with this guy. Cause I had, I had demoed all the songs at home and I had a running order and I, I had the whole thing planned out. I just didn't know where I was going to do it and who I was going to do it with. And, uh, and then COVID kind of hit. So it was essentially just the two of us for the most part. We'd, we'd have a few people come in here and there. We cut a couple of tracks outside with, with a full band out in his driveway, essentially. Uh, <laughs> but the rest of the time was just the two of us. We, he had a, we, we kind of set up a, 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 a pane of glass and, and just piled stuff up so there'd be a wall between the two of us and just to keep each other, you know, safe. His wife's a cardiologist. So, you know, kind of. Oh, there you go. You're covered. <laughs> well, <laughs> had to be a little extra careful because she was seeing COVID patients all the time. Sure. And, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, we kind of got used to it and, and it was fun in its own way, recording that way. Like it wasn't until the very end that we could finally sort of be in the same room together and do things like, well, you stand here and do this and I'll stand here and do this and we can kind of do stuff together. But uh, it was a trip. And we'd have a few hours at a time each day, and then we'd have to pick up our kids from wherever they were. And, <laughs> and uh, but it was really creative, and uh, it was so creative. I just thought, you know, I really need to build my own studio because every time I go to make a record, it's finding who I'm going to do it with. And, you know, it involves a lot of things, and uh, money is always a thing. And, it, and I had nothing but time on my hands. Right. So I built, I built a studio that I'm sitting in now, and, and, uh, I was just kind of inspired by the way he could just he didn't have a whole lot of gear other than some good recording gear and a few mics and a drum kit and and uh just a vibe and i just thought well i, I can do that i can put that together and so i've been having a lot of fun recording myself now here too as a result of that yeah. so yeah all right very good so the songs themselves you said you kind of had them ready to go and in a running order and everything before you made it is that usually yeah. the way you work or just because you had so much time to 
on your hands. No, it's well, I usually have a loose idea of what songs, but I just I just thought I don't know what I'm ready to make a record. I don't know who I'm going to do it with yet. I've got all these songs. A lot of them came at the beginning of the pandemic and it just kind of felt like of a moment and I just wanted to I wanted to get them down and and uh and uh just kind of document the moment. And honestly, when we started doing the record, I didn't even know if I was going to put it out or what. I just thought, let's just do this. These songs all go well together and and uh, let's just see what happens. And then it just sort of started building some momentum. And then and then Blackbird got involved and then it just kind of kept going. And uh, yeah. And then here we are. The only all song right. I didn't have at the beginning was Power Up. That one. Oh, really? Yeah, was a product of he, he and I. Yeah, I was going to put it on, just tack it on at the end as this quirky kind of thing. And then near the end of the whole process, I thought it really needs to go first. Used to be a young man. Kind of has a slightly different vibe than a lot of the other songs. Um, when I, because right. it's the first thing I heard, obviously, in the record, and re- kind of reminded me of John Spencer Blues Explosion a little bit as well. And do it, oh, of, yeah, cool, you, you know, kind of yeah, on the edge, yeah. kind of just weird <laughs> things it. going on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we had fun with it. Uh, yeah, sounds like it. Now, one song I wanted to touch on was Home Depot Glasses, which okay is. Shows up in the middle of the record, and it's yeah. very uh, again different sounding, all mellow and jazzy. And then you have a spoken word thing rather than singing it. So, wh- right. what, how did that come to be? I read it last night through my Home Depot glasses. A voice had died who'd given purple to gray masses. Oh yeah, it got him bad, all right. Oh, it got them good And it made me feel That we really weren't doing all that we could So that was uh, the night that John Prine passed away I was, sitting at ho- I was sitting at home with my wife And we were about to turn on the TV And I, look- I looked at my phone uh, I wear these readers at home They're $5, I get them at Home Depot They last a couple months and then I get a new pair and They're cheap yep. and they work and uh, I picked up my phone and I looked at it and saw that he'd pass. And uh, I was so overwhelmed. And the next day I, I just sat down and, and wrote that song uh, uh, and uh, just sort of, I guess, thanking him for, you know, all the unique things he brought to so many people Yep, that love his work. And uh, yep. and then we recorded it and uh, we recorded it. Uh, we, we cut two versions of that. First, we cut it. Uh, and I sang it. There was there was actually a melody that g- goes through the whole song, and we sang that, and we cut that, and there was no drums, but it was cool. I liked it, but as the record kept going on, it just seemed it wasn't interesting enough to me, sort of. So we we went back to it and started it from scratch and did it again, and we decided to come up with you know take take just an organ. He's got a cheap, uh, not cheap, but an old Lowry Wandering Genie organ. It's got some program beats in it. And we just found right. one we liked and just cut it to that. And I, and I sang it over and over again until by the end, I was just talking it. I just kind of wanted to get deeper and deeper into the, mo- into the headspace. And by the end, there was no melody at all. I just spoke it out. And, and I right. just felt, you know, that was, that was what I was trying to get across. Yeah. Right, right, right. So other than so, obviously uh, enjoying John Prine's work, uh, do you have any personal relationship with him? Do you ever meet him, talk to him? Uh, I, I I met him once. Uh, I met him once, but I I, I I work a lot with a guy named Roger Cook, a, a songwriter, an English songwriter who's been living here for forty or fifty years, and uh, right. and he's written hundreds yeah. of songs with John Prine, and uh-huh. and they were close friends, and they would go fishing all the time together, and uh, and uh, we worked together for a couple of years before John died, and I and and I was I was sort of hoping one day that we get to. I get to meet him through Roger and maybe we could even write together or something like that, but that never happened. But I met Roger opening a show for John's brother, Billy Brine, who's uh, also yeah. an entertainer. He's a very entertaining guy and a songwriter and he's really cool. And so uh, I know those two guys, but I, the only time I met John was 10 or 12 years ago at the station in here 
and it was just random. A friend took me there to see Billy Prine actually, and, and, and John halfway through the show, up walked John Prine on the stage. It's a small little club, really small place, a bluegrass right. club, and up walks John Prine and played five or six songs. And you know, at the end of the night, everyone was he was just sitting in a corner with with his brother and some friends, and I sort of walked up and said hello, and that was it. But cool. you know, uh, but super everybody, uh, you know, I have a lot of friends who were mutually. I guess friends with him and he was just revered as just a, a beautiful guy who, who supported the, the musicians, the, a lot of the singers here that he liked. And he was just part of the community and uh, everybody who knew him loved him. And that carries through in his work. You know, it wasn't, he was yeah. definitely not one of these guys where he comes across one way in his work, but it, in real life, not necessarily that way. He, he's just <laughs> a genuine quirky, brilliant, funny, sweet guy, yeah. just like his work. Cool. You know? Cool. Uh, yeah. Another one I want to touch on was that was another time, which okay. Kind of, yeah, yeah. I'm curious because uh, your vocal kind of fades up; uh, it starts really faint, and there's a piano thing going on, and yeah. then like two, three minutes into the song, it totally goes off in another direction, and starts rocking out. <laughs> so yeah. that sounds like a bit of fun. Was that the way you thought of it when you wrote it, or did it develop that way when you and uh, Scott were working together? I love this, uh, the Neil Young album, Tonight's the Night, and, and I love uh, the title song, the way it's kind of got that refrain, and then there's just sort of this loose jam, and it just kind of keeps coming back to it. And that song I actually wrote several years ago, uh, thinking about that concept, and um, I was away from my son, and I really missed him, and, and, and uh, so it was kind of about that. He was very young at the time, like three. And, right. um, and uh and then over time it developed uh, live where we kind of developed the way we did it. But then when I got in with Scott, it got even more interesting. Like the whole, like you talk about the vocal fading in, that was all his idea. And, yep. uh, and the beginning was always stripped down, but there was kind of a drum beat and there were guitars and we took all that out and made it just piano. And then so that the impact would be even greater when it, when the band kind of comes in and, uh, so that was fun to record. That was really fun yeah. one to realize after having right. played it for a long time, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I had a feeling Neil Young was going to enter the conversation at some point after hearing especially the guitar solo in Last Letter, which is Okay. <laughs> very Neely. <laughs> well, he's he's someone I grew up with, I mean not personally, but I, I grew up in Toronto yeah. and uh Right. and uh his ghost just kind of hung over my life from the moment I first discovered his music. And, and I'll never forget the moment I first did uh, when I was really young, I was into uh, pop of the day. And then also sort of metal bands of the day when I was a young teenager. And when I was about 14, a friend of mine loaned me uh, the live rust video and I'll never forget watching it and just seeing him play guitar on like a hurricane and all those songs. And it kind of, I realized it was something that, it kind of melded everything I loved. There was, there were catchy songs. Uh, there was big guitar, but there was a new element I hadn't really connected with yet. in in my music, which is, you know, really the songwriting and just the depth of what a song could really do. Uh, so it sort of max matched Led Zeppelin with, it was just all there. And, and, uh, and I just, <laughs> I, I became a huge fan at a young age and, and I, I definitely, yep. uh, is the way he sings and plays is kind of in my DNA. So I'm not surprised to hear you say there's a, <laughs> you can hear a bit of influence there. I wanted to talk a little bit about digging in the last song on the album. Mm -hmm. Um, and I heard a line in it that immediately made me think of something else. And I, I re realized, I think it was a George Harrison lyric, and I was wondering if that was anything to do with what you were thinking at the same time. Sun ain't gonna rise all morning The storms are coming today I'll Take my hand and squeeze 
so tight. Tell me we can find a way. The no. sun ain't gonna rise in all morning is all is very oh. similar to all things must all pass. things must pass. Yeah, you're right. Uh, that's probably. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I should change that, shouldn't I? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not exactly the same anyway, so I think you're good. But no, it's nice to be uh, to evoke something else like that. What were you thinking then when you wrote the song? Well, a lot of songs just start with melodies that kind of float around your head, and, and you just build it off of that. So, uh, yeah, I'm familiar with that record. So uh, how about that? Um, I was... Uh, <laughs> What's the, the uh, is that the line too, or is it just is the line, the line's it's, similar. The melody is definitely similar, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sun, I've, sun, yeah, I I, that's a great I song. think I looked it up. Uh, I might still have it up here. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I did look it up. It, it was close, right. but not exactly. So Close, but not quite. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I wouldn't want to be on the wrong side of that uh, organization, no. that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'd that end team. up the loser on that bad yeah, boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was, uh, that was like early pandemic times. Uh, and right. I was just, I, I just felt like every, uh, it just felt like everyone in their life, we're all just kind of hunkered down in our own little small, suddenly very small universe. And I just felt uh, something about, we all had to just sort of dig in and just try to like get through it one foot at a time. And, uh, and, uh, you know, we could do this. Everyone, everyone, we have the strength to like get through this because we're such a social being species yep. and, and, uh, it's difficult to not be able to do that and see people falling left and right around you from this thing. And gosh, you know, yep. so it's really all about that. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, thanks for spending time talking with me today. It's been a real pleasure. Good luck yes. with the record when it comes out and hope everything happens the way you want it to. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And I appreciate the My support pleasure. and having me on and being familiar with it. And thanks so much, Marty. It's great.